Hail Cobra Commander, the Great Snake rules forever. Here's a look at the brand new Super 7 G.I. Joe Ultimate's Cobra Commander Enemy Leader. Every good story needs a villain, and Cobra Commander is the kind of egomaniacal arch-villain legends are made of. This 7-inch scale, fully articulated G.I. Joe Ultimates figure of Cobra Commander comes with interchangeable hands. One holds a Cobra wrapped around the Earth, which you may recognize from video game commercial and a variety of other accessories, including multiple weapons, his snake scepter, and soft goods cape and more. You're going to love Cobra Commander Ultimates figure as much as he loves the sound of his own voice, and that is a very high bar. He once was a man. Now he's a figure from the folks over at Super 7. Now, before we get a closer look at the brand new G.I. Joe Ultimate's Cobra Commander, let's grab the tape measure just to see how tall the figure stands. And while I'm doing this, also, let me just say that if you guys are interested and would like to get Cobra Commander in your hands, he's available right now over at Entertainment Earth. I'll provide the link down below in the video description. In the meantime, though, Cobra Commander stands 7 inches in height, or the figure's 18 centimeters tall. Two figures, two figures I'm going to bring in for comparisons. The first of which, obviously, is the Duke that we looked at in the earlier review. And I might have even said that Duke was a little shorter than seven inches, but if you actually look at the figures head to head, Cobra Commander is just a tad bit taller than Duke, but not by much. Another figure I did want to bring in for fun, not certainly something you're going to be scaling in comparison, but here's what he also looks like with the 25th anniversary Cobra Commander, a figure that I still luckily have as part of my collection. With the accessories to come include with Cobra Commander, we'll be taking a deep dive down the rabbit hole of all the original G.I. Joe episodes. As you'll recognize, or some of you may recognize, some of the accessories that the figure comes include with. And then there are some others that I was actually really surprised to see that Super 7 would have included with our dear Cobra Commander. I wish I could actually have said that in Destro's voice. The first one may not be one that you would recognize right away. He comes include with a laser kind of rifle. And while you may think to yourself, well, why would Cobra Commander ever be carrying around a rifle? If you date back, I think, to the 19... I want to say 85 intro. The one that you probably remember the most about that intro is the fact that it's a giant cobra-shaped starship that's flying towards. And then, of course, the G.I. Joes go on board and start defeating them. One notable thing at the end of that intro, the 85, I think, intro, was the fact that Cobra Commander actually had Lady J in his sights before interrupted by Flint. And Flint then throws him through the red glass and he kind of falls down on a globe. And I think through that, somehow, this big giant cobra symbol starship ends up blowing up. The fact that they would actually include that as a reference point, I think, is fantastic. Although, unfortunately, though, in the case here of the rifle, the rifle, as you can see, is quite warped. I'm going to probably have to heat that up in hot water. It's molded here in a dark blue plastic. You can see, like, the end nozzle has been painted in a nice color of gray. But again, the fact that they would even throw in that as, an, as a reference more to the intros, not necessarily something you would have actually had in the cartoon, I think, is a fun touch. Now, while what's rather interesting, though, is while he does come include with the toy-specific head sculpt that we're going to talk more about in a moment, what's rather confusing about Cobra Commander is the fact he does come include with tiny little pistols. The one I would probably be most identifying to display with Cobra Commander is this one right here. I just think that that's classic-looking Cobra Commander. He also comes include with this one as well, which I'm sure he does use at some point in the episode. You can see there's a Cobra symbol on this one. This one does have some additional red that's on the handle. Uh, they're very similar in design, but... What's funny is the fact that they would have used then the time and the plastic to actually mold this pistol and overlooking the obvious pistol of not including the one that came include with the original 80s Cobra Commander. Just to bring back in the uh, 25th anniversary, one thing that was at least good about the original Cobra Commander and then the 25th anniversary was that there was actually a section on the back of the figure's body where you can store that more dated looking pistol. And yet for some reason didn't come include with Cobra Commander. I mean, they include this but I would have instead used the plastic to come up with, again, that more classic looking pistol. Not something that necessarily would have had to plug onto the back of the figure's body, because obviously in this case, you would obviously notice a very ugly looking hole on the back where the figures would hold a pistol. But at the very least, I think they could have probably included it. Something also going down deep into the rabbit hole, the figure comes included with uh, a weapon that Cobra Commander uses in the episode Cobra Creatures. 
where he actually controls the animals. And at one point, as indicated on the back here with the symbol, I don't know if you can actually make out that that's supposed to be a symbol of a dog, he actually ends up controlling the mind of Junkyard. So Junkyard is actually going to be attacking Mutt. And uh, Mutt keeps trying to reason with the animal, trying to tell his dog, it's me, it's your old pal Mutt. Well, unfortunately, though, again, like it took a while for to, for Junkyard to realize that that was his master. But I love the fact that they would have actually included this as a reference point to a single thrown in episode point. You can see as well that it's got some nice coloring done there in the red. You got some orange and some green. The symbol, again, of the dog there on the back. This, while looking at it from the top, actually looks like a miniature version of what the original shark design characters, the shark vehicles that G.I. Joe would have used. I think in the mass device episode where they go down below in the deep waters to try to, well, they end up having to fight these giant tube worms. Gru gruesome looking uh, episode, but this kind of reminds me of like the original uh, Cobra or the original G.I. Joe sharks before, again, they became the more white familiar looking sharks that Deep Six is known to flying around in. Very cool reference point, the fact that they would have included that. The figure also comes included with a detonator. I think this was probably in an episode here or there. I can't really actually remember what episode it was from. But you can see there's a Cobra symbol there. There's a little a couple of dials that you can move up and down. And there's a little activation button down below. But further down the rabbit hole, the figure also comes included with the Synthoid Controller. The Synthoid Controller from the episode, the Synthoid Conspiracy, actually does, have, again, have a little dial. The dial doesn't actually move up and down, but if you have it all the way up, I think it ends up melting the Synthoids. And again, I love the idea that they would have actually included this in this figure release of Cobra Commander. Still, again, a bit bummed the fact he didn't come included with the original 80s pistol. But I think for everything else the figure comes included with, we're doing pretty good so far. Uh, a very obscure reference. The figure also comes included with the globe that has the wrapped around King Cobra. This is actually re referencing more to a video game commercial in which Cobra Commander is actually carrying around this globe that has the serpent wrapped around it. I mean, it's a nice little throw in, in there as well. I probably would have said that the plastic probably could have been used for something else. I, I would have even said to use this plastic and included a hooded Cobra Commander head sculpt. But I'm sure that's something we're going to be getting as a separate figure. Super 7 isn't going to be going all in just with all one release of Cobra Commander. I'm sure they're going to get a little bit mileage out of it. I hope we do get ourselves a Cobra movie, Cobra Commander. But there's a really good, nicely detailed. You can see like the head sculpt there of the serpent's face. And you can see it as well. It's wrapped around the globe. Now this unfortunately fits rather awkwardly in the Cobra Commander's hands. Uh, he does have actually a dedicated hand just to hold on to. He does come with this hand. And while you may think that that's just a peg that's going to plug into the bottom of this, it actually is a unique shape. It is a half circle, so you can see there's one more section that's flat, a more rounded section. This is just going to plug into the bottom of it, and just like that. And then he does hold the globe. Although, again, like he doesn't hold it. Oh, I had it, I had it facing the wrong way. He doesn't hold it all that well. And a lot of times I just drop the hand. I, he isn't going to hold it as best. To, I wish almost that he could have actually held it from the side. But I think actually in the original commercial, he was holding it from the bottom. So that's probably one of the reasons why they threw that in there. I'm going to have to go back and retrieve that hand in a second. Figure also comes in clue with a serpent scepter. Really nicely detailed also as well. Not as much paint happening here. It's kind of more just relying on the gold plastic than anything else. But it's a fine looking scepter. Scepter seems a little on the, the short side. I wish it was a little bit longer than what it actually is. And the figure also comes in clue with a hand specifically for holding the scepter. Because like the other hands are only more gripping hands for holding like any of the weapons that he wields. Things like the scepter, obviously you're going to want something that's got a little bit more of a secure grip. So he's got a hand dedicated for that. The figure also comes included with binoculars. Now, unlike Duke's binoculars, who I still happen to have his over here, which is really hard of a plastic, it's supposed to be like mimicking the way that the original binoculars look like with, with Duke from the original Joe line. This actually is a Cobra Commander binoculars. It looks a little bit more like what he would have had in the cartoon. I want to say this is from the episode again. Uh, I think it might have even been the mass device where Cobra Commander was up on a hill and he's actually strapped onto a claw, a Cobra Claw. And there's actually several of the Cobra Claws that are going to be flying down. But I mean, just to say that he probably has used this th these binoculars in any one of the many episodes that G.I. Joe would have had. Again, softer plastic here, so you don't have to worry as much about this. And then he does have, again, like he's got dedicated hands really for holding everything. So he has like these hands right here that you can kind of grip around. Although this hand actually is really really better for holding like well like for example a synthoid weapon for example and any one of the uh the detonators for example but i mean i guess you could technically fit this around the, the binoculars too if you wanted to have cobra commander carrying the goggles with them binoculars with them uh while we're also on the topic of hands he does come with a gestured hand uh, these by the way are all soft plastic 
I don't know why they're as soft as they are, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not necessarily complaining about them. He does have also closed fists in the sockets of his forearms. Uh, the figure also comes with, of course, uh, another hand for holding, like, let's just, for, for example, grab any one of the pistols. Comes with a trigger firing hand for holding any one of the pistols. I say any one of them, there's only really two. And then there's the, the animal controlling device as well, which I guess you could technically also use. Let's just put that into his hand also as well. And yeah, it just fits around the trigger. Tiny little shark. Doesn't look like... It actually kind of looks a little like the Mirage also from Silverhawks. We're going really deep on the on the rabbit holes and all these. Again, he comes with pointing hands. He comes with, again, like gripping hands. So he, he's really good to go in all the departments. Finally, finally... Uh, actually, not that's not true. One one final thing the figure comes included with before we actually look at the interchangeable head sculpt is he also comes included with a soft goods cape. Now, what they've done is they've wireframed here along the back and along down the side here as well. So while it doesn't necessarily attach onto the figure by a clip, nor does it attach by magnets, it actually rather instead just sort of fits around Cobra Commander's neck. And it does a fine job to stay around Cobra Commander. Now, I think he has obviously worn the, the pink cape in uh, an episode or two. I would have loved to have also that they could have included the black cape that had the red interior that he uses in the Cobra in the G.I. Joe movie. That's a great looking cape. I probably wouldn't even end up displaying the figure anyway. So I kind of sound like a bit of a hypocrite to say I really wish that they could have included this and not even really display the figure with it anyways. But again, it's a nice little a, a, a accessory. Like I said, it just literally just attaches on the back of Cobra Commander's body. I mean, there's, there's no magnets or anything like that. So we're going to put that to the side. And then the last thing that Cobra Commander comes included with, if you wanted to one, if you wanted to have one that looked a little bit more like the, his original 80s toy, then he comes included with this head sculpt, which really, for looking at it, isn't that much different than the head, the defaulted head that he comes out of his plastic prison with, short of the fact he doesn't have the gray that's on the top of his helmet. The original toy didn't have it, so that's the reasoning why that they, they include this. I think, I don't know, I mean, I probably would have just done away with all together, including the, the actual toy a head sculpt simply just because the rest of his body is very much G.I. Joe cartoon. It doesn't look as much like, I mean, in the original toy, the Cobra symbol was right in the middle. This clearly is designed more so from Cobra Commander in the cartoon. So I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I would have included the alternate head sculpt. I guess it's fine to have that in there, but I would much rather prefer to display him with the cartoon head sculpt instead. That's everything. Wow, we just ran through a gauntlet of that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Cobra Commander. Now, on paper, based on what you've already probably heard me talking about this guy, you would think that I really do like the figure, and I do. There are, though, a few little small things, small, tiny little things I would have changed the figure. I guess we'll start with the one that bothers me less, is the size of the Cobra symbol. The Cobra symbol in the cartoon, I mean, this is pretty tiny. It actually should take up a lot more real estate space on the front of his chest. I would have even had it so that the Cobra symbol was probably underneath the flap of one of his collars. But it should have been like, what, like this, right? It shouldn't have been as small as what it is right now. You know, for what it is, as small as it is, it's not a bad looking Cobra symbol, but it needed to be a whole lot bigger. My biggest takeaway, though, from Cobra Commander is the fact that they left off the swishes. They left off the reflection points on his helmet. Now, it, to be accurate to the cartoon, which of course we are to assume that this helmet is supposed to be, he really then should have like a squiggle line down on the side, or sometimes it was even two. He should have one really right down the middle, and then he should have like a little speck of white just onto the side. Now, you're saying to yourself, you're being awfully hard on this figure, shouldn't he? Like, why does it matter? Why does it matter? Well, you know, to be, again, honestly fair, if this was supposed to look like Cobra Commander from the cartoon, I would have thrown in all those things. Those are all very important, I feel at least, reference points. If you're going to be recreating the look of Cobra Commander from the cartoon, I think you need to have, again, the swishes on the side, the little squiggles. It doesn't have to make... I don't think that's the sound of a squiggle. He needs to have the center line, and he also needs to have a little spot on the side. I think in the earlier episodes, too, he often kind of had a couple of squiggles down the sides. But, like, the go-to is always, like, double squiggles, single line, little reflection off to the corner. And I'm sure I probably could do that. Because, really, without that, I feel like the head sculpt or the, the helmet sculpt is a little bare. It, it's really screaming in a Cobra Commander high voice the need to have those extra little things thrown in there. Those are all reference points. One other thing I originally I was going to say is like, I don't think I would have wanted his neck silver, but then to go and look at it again, most of the time Cobra Commander actually did have a silver neck. There were a couple of episodes where he actually had the lighter color blue in his neck, but more times than not, it was always silver. So I'm going to kind of re retract that a little bit. The rest of the Cobra body is actually really quite good. Um, again, like helmet wise, I mean, I, there's nothing really other than just the little squiggles on the front that I would have changed and done differently. The helmet does look really good in Cobra Commander. The rest of his body also does look good too. And because again, like Duke, we looked at before, he does have that crunch here on the front. 
I don't find it does look as abrupt. Let's just bring Duke back in here for a second. You sort of see where Duke is sucking in his gut. Cobra Commander doesn't have to because Cobra Commander is naturally lean and mean. So while he does have the crunch, it isn't, it's a little bit more seamless. It's a little bit more consistent when you look at it from the top all the way down to the bottom of his belt. Speaking of his belt, you can see there's some additional detailing that they've added down below here. Some silver, a little bit of triangular red there and the pockets and pouches, all the things that you would have in the cartoon. Cobra Commander is so important. In fact, he feels the need to have a double belt. Who in their right mind would ever carry around a double belt? Cobra Commander would have a double belt and he would have pockets there on the top and the bottom, gray and black. And then he has a few pockets there also on the back as well. That actually is a softer plastic than I was expecting it to be. He has the uh, gloves, of course. That's also something that's very common with Cobra Commander. The uh, gloves, I couldn't help but notice, are a little more shinier here at the top than they are to the actual hands. But they're pretty close. And they're not going to bother me too much. he got the little belt there on the sides of his leg for no other reason than I guess just... This one leg needs to be a little tighter than what it is. Now, here's one thing I did mention with when we had a look at Duke is that, for example, like Duke had little marks on here what looked to be left behind by glue. Now, while I don't have that on Cobra Commander necessarily, I have like what almost looks like an indentation in the plastic. I think it is actually glue, but the way that they've done it, it looks like it's actually embedded into the plastic surface. So that's a bit of a bummer. Although, you know, to be fair, looking at the reviews I've seen of Snake Eyes, I think Snake Eyes was one of the worst, worst figures to have that extra little bit of glue. Mine is actually pretty good. It's only here and it's only got a little bit here on the side of his leg. I think all the rest of the figure stills is pretty clean. Pretty clean indeed. One other thing I did have problems with my figure, at least, and if you have yourself a Cobra Command, you can let me know if you've had similar issues, is my ankles. Not my ankles. Not this guy's ankles. Cobra Commander's ankles are loose. Uh, they're loose up and down this way, and they're also loose back and forth this way. And I really don't think again. Like, this figure I've only had of the packaging for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, kind of playing around with this guy. Uh, he should not have loose ankles right away. This should be something that maybe down the road. Yeah, maybe down the road, but not right away when you get this guy to the packaging. Speaking of articulation for Cobra Commander, let's have a look at that right now. His head rotates all the way around. It looks down, it looks up. And again, if you did want to swap out the head sculpt, I didn't I didn't do that yet in the review. Just pop the head off, replace it with this one. You know, again, it looks okay, but it looks like it's clearly missing something on the top. Again, I would have probably just used this plastic, dedicated this plastic, put this plastic towards something else. Hooded Cobra Commander would have been my obvious one, but I think, again, we're probably going to be getting ourselves a version 2 Cobra Commander that's going to have the hood. If we are still, are we still allowed to have a hooded Cobra Commander? I don't know. I don't know if we're. I don't know if we're allowed to. Let's just pop the head back off and put back on. I feel to be the superior head. Yeah, the head rotates all the way around. It does look down. Pretty good. Actually, a lot better than Duke. Looks up, and you can also rock it back and forth as well. Now, these shoulders actually move on Cobra Commander's benefit a lot better than Duke's. His actually go up at, at full 90 degrees. You can take those arms and rotate them all the way around. He has a swivel point at the bicep, only possessing, unfortunately, a single hinge once again in the elbow. Arms rotate back and forth. Hands rotate all the way around, upper torso crunch, waist swivel once again, legs split out, once again relying on the ball hinge joint on the inside there. You can take those legs and move them forward, only to, well, like a, a guest boat there. You can also move them back. And yeah, they do abruptly stop. I mean, obviously when you get to the, the sculpting of the behind at the back, you're not going to be able to move the leg any bit further past that point. The legs, again, do split out though. Single hinge only on the knee. Uh, not a, really a rotation necessarily. I can't really, I mean, you can rotate it just a little bit, but it seems like it's designed not to be rotating. Uh, speaking though, rotating, you can rotate the feet back and forth this way. You can move them up and down, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Shouldn't be loose like this. So immediately out the gate. All in all, a good looking Cobra Commander. I think, you know, again, like I might have even said when we did the review of Duke, let's just bring back in Duke for comparisons once again. I may have even said in the review of the Duke that I thought the Cobra Commander was might it maybe may have been the weaker of the four figures that we did get. Now, to be fair, honest and honestly fair for Cobra Commander, like the bar was pretty set high. You already had Duke. I mean, you had the leader of the Joes and he turned out to be a great looking figure. We have a Cobra Bat and I'm looking forward to that Cobra Bat. And we have ourselves an original V1 version one snake eyes while he's still blue and carrying around timber the wolf but while i do actually like those figures a cobra commander actually isn't all that bad i think really more so is the cosmetic changes the the things that i think that super seven didn't do or didn't deliver properly with cobra commander the two biggest ones overlooking whatever issues i may have with the angles he needed definitely to have a larger cobra symbol and he needed to have this squiggle 
whatever it is, the squiggle swooshing lines all over the front of his face. He has that in the cartoon. He should have had that in the figure as well. It's not so much that Cobra Commander is the weakest of the waves. So I really want to correct myself by that. Cobra Commander, I think I had the highest expectation for, and knowing what the character looks like in the cartoon, I feel like while it is a good figure from Super 7's part, it does underdeliver at least in some of the details. The construction of the figure, short of having the loose ankles, does look very much like Cobra Commander. He's a lean-looking character, and he has decent articulation. I know that some people did criticize that these figures are limited in the articulation department, but I think in order to get a seamless-looking cartoon body, you can't start throwing a whole bunch of articulation points in the figure, because it's going to dis disrupt some of the sculpt that Super 7 put in there. No, I don't think it's the sculpt necessarily that under delivers on Cobra Commander. It's more the missing details. And it's the details that as a person who loved, grew up, grew up loving G.I. Joe as a kid, G.I. Joe was my bread and butter when it came to watching any 80s cartoons. G.I. Joe is right at the top of the list. And I was collecting G.I. Joe toys more than anything else. That's including Transformers. That's including Thundercats. G.I. Joe was it. So for me, at least to go back and look at Cobra Commander, I know what Cobra Commander looks like. His symbol on the side of his chest I think is way too small. And the biggest one, the biggest culprit, if you're going to be releasing yourself a cartoon looking Cobra Commander, overlooking the fact he doesn't even have the dividing line in the middle of his dome. He doesn't have the squiggle black lines on the one side. And he doesn't even have that calling card little white sp splotch, that little reflection of light that he has on the one side. Those are all things that were very much there and parent on Cobra Commander in the cartoon design. And I can't understand why they left it off when it came to the figure. I mean, everything else screams to me in Cobra Commander's high-pitched voice. This looks like a cartoon Cobra Commander, except for those two things. Now, I can't change the sizing of the symbol. I probably could maybe take myself an image of the Cobra Snake and try to... I'm not even going to do that. That's more... That's something that an experienced customizer could probably do themselves. But I might just try to find to take a permanent marker. I got to be very careful when I'm doing this. Take a permanent marker and see if I can maybe add those little squiggle lines and just that little bit of white in the reflection on the on the side of his helmet. And that would be... That would be, at least for me, half of the problems that are plaguing with the Cobra Commander. Again, it's not the designing of the character. Well, I guess it is the designing. It's not the construction of Cobra Commander that's the deal breaker. It's just the fact I think he just under delivers in some of those cartoon specific features that the character is known for having. But what do you guys think of Cobra Commander? Do you think I was a little too hard? Maybe I was too hard. Maybe I was a little bit too hard. But he does he does need to have the squiggles, at least on this helmet. Sizing of the symbol on his chest I can live with, the squiggles on his helmet he definitely needed to have. Uh, if you guys did pick up Cobra Commander for yourself, let me know down below in the comment section if you guys have had any issues with the posability on the figure. For me, at least, it's only really just the ankles. Anything of just putting like a pistol or the synthoid control device in his hand is not going to give me any problems. But if I put anything heavy in his hand, like, for example, a wrapped around Cobra of the globe, I find he gets a little wobbly in the ankles. You could technically use yourself a display stand, but Super 7 does not pack any of those other figures, any of the ultimate figures with display stands. So you're sort of going to have to find yourself a display stand through other outlets. But if you have picked up this figure, let me know if you've had any issues down below in the in the posability end of things, or just as a whole, what would you have done differently to Cobra Commander, whether you picked up the figure or you haven't. Also as well, if you guys are interested to pick up Cobra Commander, as well as Duke, as well as the soon-to-look-at Cobra Bat and, uh, of course, Snake Eyes and Timber. They are available as of right now, as of right now, over on Entertainment Earth. I can't guarantee how long they're going to be stocked in at the store. So if you guys are interested, you can click the link down below in the video description. And also, as well, it's something I never tend to mention in these reviews, that if you do head on over also to Entertainment Earth, providing the link that I do in the video description will also save you guys a little bit of money when it comes to checking out. It only works with in-stock items, but you can save yourself at least, I think, 10% off your purchase. So that's not bad. And that not only works with, of course, the Super 7 stuff that we've looked at, but that's across the board. Anything that they have in stock will save you that 10% off right at the bat when you're checking out. So make sure you guys are using that. If you guys enjoyed this video, I want to hit with a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and certainly still on board to see the rest of the G.I. Joe Ultimates, that is the cartoon accurate bat, which we're probably going to be looking at next. And then we're going to be eventually looking at Snake Eyes and also Timber. So we've got two more to go through. Uh, make sure, yeah, you're hitting that subscribe button down below and that you're also turning on the bell notification. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.